Michaela Dietz, who is the voice of Amethyst. Dietz! Michaela Dietz! We have Shelby Rivera, who is the voice of Paradox. We have Jennifer Pass, who is the voice of Lapis Lazuli. And we have Grace Roller, who is the voice of Connie. for being here in this panel. I absolutely love Thank you for having us. I know. I, I love the show, and I know everyone does too. And looking over the incredible five seasons and even the Steven Universe movie, this show is, is amazing because we get to know your characters and the ensemble cast, and we just dive into this whole literal universe. Um, can each of you talk about what sets this animated show apart from others that are on right now and why it, you think it's so special and has such an amazing fan base? Well, one, we're, we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Sorry. That, was that is fun. true. Um, I love that the show is... Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you guys are so beautiful! <laughs> oh, I don't even have my glasses on. <laughs> but um, I love that the show is so musical. Yes, the music's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, I love that this show, uh, I feel like it's so beautifully inclusive and, um, you know, it does a, it's, it's been amazing for representation. I feel like yes. purple, <laughs> purple space rocks have not been represented um, in a lot of mediums, so I'm, I'm really glad that the show exists for that reason. Yes, I second that, Michaela. Um, the representation and the inclusion. What, what other cartoon has ube cakes for Filipinos out there? What? Uh, also, I think um, everybody can find themselves in the show uh, in, 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 a, in a vast array of characters. Um, I think everybody that I've talked to, fans of the shows, people that are brand new to the show, they're always like, I see myself in one or more of the characters. And I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know, I, I'm biased though, because we are all on Steven Universe, so I think, I think Steven Universe is the best show ever! Yeah! <laughs> yes, I, I second, fourth, fifth that. Um, and I just also love how these themes just kind of like sneak up on you. Like something just so seemingly like, oh, this is just kind of throwaway stuff, but everything is so meaningful and there's like so much like, uh, deep, deep meaning in everything, and it just, it, it just, the, the character payoff with, with everyone's story, you just think something is just kind of a throwaway thing, but then there's like so much great payoff, so, and I just have, I love how that really just sneaks up on you, and you're like, wow, this is deep, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah. definitely. Picking back and off of what everyone has said so far, I mean, there's just so much love that is put into the show, and I feel like, it's hard to not see that when you're watching it because everyone who works on the show loves what they're doing and it really shines through when you're watching the show. I also feel like there, there aren't many shows that can uh, show something as terrifying as cat fingers, but then also as <laughs> like heartwarming as, uh, you know, Steven protecting Connie with his shield. So I feel like that it's just a wide range of emotion that um, Rebecca Sugar and the Crooniverse and are, are able to bring to us, so, yeah. Well, speaking of a wide range of emotions, one of the standout moments, in particular in season five, is when we find out the big reveal about Rose Quartz and the fact that she's a uh, big diamond. And Wait, what? <laughs> and I have to say, I had to take a personal day because that was, I was blown away by that. Now, I just want to ask, when did you guys find out about it. Was this set in motion from like the beginning? Was this just 
how did that come to be? Because I didn't see it coming. I don't know if others saw it coming, but that's a really big revelation within the show, and it changed everything for Steven and for your character. So how did you find out about it, and what was your reaction to learning that that's the big secret? So we, we record on a Wednesday, typically, and uh, we get the script on a Monday, so it would be the Monday before that Wednesday, I found out. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. I, okay. I, I found out about the whole Pink Diamond everything reveal when you guys did. Um, I don't remember usually what I ate for breakfast the day before, so it's kind of one of those things when I watch the episodes, I don't like to look at Twitter or social media because I don't like to see spoilers, but when I see it, I'm in silence and I'm, I'm in awe. Um, so I don't really know. Did any of us know that that was going to happen? I don't think I, so because... I, yeah, I found it all in real time too and yeah, everyone okay. else oh, wow. was <laughs> tweeting about it and I would watched it in real time. I was like, oh my gosh, that's what happened. <laughs> For me, I didn't, I, I found out at a later record because I wasn't on, like recording on the episode where it found out. But it, I think Steven says something to Connie about it and I remember being in the booth and asking Rebecca, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I, I, and she was like, oh, okay, so, and just walked me through it, and I was like, oh, oh, oh okay, okay, I guess it's just time to start working and not process that, like, fully. <laughs> I remember recording separately for some of that episode, and watching the, the entire show um, from start to finish in real time, was when everything sort of synced in for me personally. Um, but I'm much like, uh, what is that I'm character, Paparicha? Pa pa you know it, you know it. <laughs> the one that knows things after the fact. That's, that's me in real life. I R L. <laughs> well, he is so hip. I am so hip, hip you guys. <laughs> Dee Dee is such a cool mom. I'm embarrassing my children right now. Sorry, kids. Well, in, in that episode, Pearl, it was a really big deal for her because you are so loyal to Rose and the fact that you had to keep this secret, especially from Steven, and I know it was a very emotional episode. Was there anything that, when you went in that Monday, to find out about it for Wednesday, uh, did you have to prepare kind of how Pro would react? Like, did you take emotion from somewhere else? Or how did you kind of bring out that kind of brilliant performance that you did in the episode? It was a lot. Wow. But it, wow. uh, you were amazing. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know, I, that's very nice. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, you know, what was the question again? <laughs> the, the, did I, did I have... Dee, basically, how are you so amazing? Yeah. So, basically. listen, listen, <laughs> listen, Linda. Um, I, you know, I really, I really can't take any cre credit. I mean, it's all Rebecca and, and the Crudiverse. I mean, they write such wonderful words and beautiful music and draw beautiful, uh, you know, uh, backgrounds and characters and they have so much backstory. All of that is there for me to just dive into, you know? So um, I really rely on the material and the voice direction from uh, Rebecca and her team and th that's really how I get to any of the places that I go in the show. I don't really feel like I need to go elsewhere to get the emotions. I mean, this show's got enough feels as it is. I mean, can you agree? Hashtag all the feels. Right? All the feels. <laughs> all, every single one of them. So, you know, that's sort of yeah. how, I, how I do the thing. Right. I mean, the show is very much built on emotion and character development. And one of the things that's a major point in the series is the fusion. And um, at one point, we finally saw Obsidian, who was a mixture of Steven and Amethyst and, and Pearl and Garnet. So I just wanted to ask, since there are different fusions, what's your favorite fusion, even if it's not with you, but what's your favorite fusion? And kind of what do you think fusion represents 
in the show, in that universe? What do you think that means to you when fusion happens? I, I think, um, I think my favorite fusion is smoky quartz. Um, and, and, and to me, um, I, I love it because uh, Stephen and Amethyst really bond in this very vulnerable time um, and they learn how to depend on each other. And uh, I think that's a, a beautiful thing. I don't, I don't really know how to define a fusion. I feel like that's a Rebecca question. Um, but I, I love them. I love the fusion. It's so good. They are, they're so good. Michaela, yeah. what's your favorite? So My favorite is Obsidian, for sure, because in the movie, when Obsidian forms, my mind was blown. Oh, yeah. I was like, first of all, when we saw the movie, I was with my best friend Luke, and the, well, we're sitting in the front, and I was, the whole time, we're just snapping my fingers, because I couldn't make any noise, but all you could hear was me and him go, yes! Yeah. Like, every 20 seconds, I was so excited, and when Obsidian formed, I wanted to stand up, but then it was, it was gonna be really, really not, I mean, it was just be inappropriate, obviously, in a huge theater for me to just like stand up. But it was one of those jaw-dropping moments that like I got chills. Mm. So Obsidian would be my favorite fusion. However, I think fusions are kind of the unsaid. You know, like when you see, feel energetically with someone or something and, and you know you guys are on the same page or maybe you knew each other in like a separate life mm -hmm. and you come together and it's like your mind is blown. You either like you really know somebody or you feel like really attached to something. Like my dog, I feel like if my dog and I fused, I don't know what the word would be. Charby. Charby? Yes, Charby. Charby. But I feel like that's what a fusion is. You, you take two energies and you bring them together and you're stronger together. I don't know, that's my opinion. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to get it. Thanks, thanks for that applause. Guys. I can't wait to I'm... see you and your dog fuse. <laughs> Hashtag Charby. Charby, Charby. Yes. Charby. I think my favorite was um, Steg. Oh, I know. Yes. 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 Greg and, and his dad, uh, I, Greg and his dad, Stephen and his dad. Was, it was amazing. Like, the, I, 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 up until that point, I just thought that it was like an experience uh, between, I don't know, a particular relationship. And then when I saw that it was a father and son experience, I was like, Whoa, this is amazing. I that that was one of my favorites, I think, that just really stuck out to me. And Stevani, of course, was my like when I first saw that happening, I was like, this is the first time we're seeing this kind of thing on on a cartoon and an animation. This is incredible. And I remember like looking at my son and seeing and you know just looking experiencing it through his eyes and, and it's just like a normal fun thing for him, like, oh yeah. So like every time he sees Garnet, he's like Mommy, that's, you know, she's a fusion of, of Sapphire and Ruby, and he just, he understands that kind of experience with, with two people that love each other and share an experience, so I love them all. Yeah, I, I, I also love Steg. That was an awesome moment for me, but I think one of the things that stood out to me is, I mean, we know that Greg wanted to be able to fruit fuse with Rose Quartz, and so to be able to see him have that with their son is is really cool. Oh, it's like same, 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 same. <laughs> uh, I like Opal. Yeah. Yeah. Opal for Opal. Opal for Opal. Yes, yes. I wish someone would do a Steven Universe Jurassic Park um, crossover and have a Stegosaurus. <laughs> Putting it out. Michaela would would would, would um, the, the arms be short or long? All four arms. I don't know. Maybe they're guitars. I don't know, man. Sing. Somebody. I don't know. Fan art. Fan, fan art. With sharp teeth. <laughs> Someone get on it. <laughs> okay. Well, since you guys mentioned Steven Universe, the movie, I first of all love the soundtrack. I listen to it on the loop. <laughs> I do. Um, is there a particular song from that, or just the entire series that has stood out to you the most, or is your favorite? Mm -hmm. Since I mean, music is such a big deal for the show. Wow. Um, <laughs> Other Friends is yes. well. Yeah. Happy rotation yes. in my house. Same. <laughs> Give it up for Sarah Styles. Yeah. I love the kind of beat swing sound it has. It's like electro pop yeah. swing. I don't know. Anything it's good. Oh, the reboot song? Not the, uh, it's still other friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
I really like Drift Away. Because yeah. um, that moment for me when watching the movie, I really saw Spinell's uh, character arc, and it was so tragic. I'm like, I totally get get you, Spinell, why you're like that. You were left for how many years? 600,000? 600, for 6,000 years. 600,000, right? It's a long time. Something, something. And I, it was just so beautiful, her voice, the way Sarah Stiles oh. sung that, and, and um, the lyrics of it. Um, I think for me, I was like, this is something really special when I heard Drift Away. And, and I under we, we all understood why Spinell is the way she is and why she treats Steven the way she does. And it's, mm. I, I think it was really earned that moment of the heart turning upside down and mm. her lashes, you know, she's crying. It was just, it's just genius. 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 I, I agree. I think that um, some, some tracks that I love that, uh, we don't often talk about are uh, all the instrumentals that Ivy and Sarashu create. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think throughout the series and certainly in the movie, these tracks really enhance the mood and the feeling, but without overpowering each moment. And I mean, talk about genius. Ivy and Sarashu are, yeah. whew, they, make, they make me feel mm. things, you guys. Mm. I second yep. that. My, my, my friend told me, um, she was listening to the soundtrack at her house. I, she's here with her kids too. And uh, she would say, hi guys, the mama bears over there, mama papa, oh, I can see them. And baby bears. Um, I was telling me that she was um, uh, listening to the soundtrack and in all of the little intervals between the mute, the songs and the, uh, every song, they, the, the uh, instrumentals, her kids were gonna, were telling her what was happening during that time during the movie, like all the scenes that were happening in, in between, which I thought was really kind of cool. You know, they could. Hear Julie, that. Julian does that too. He'll yeah. narrate the That's what's what happening. With, yeah, during the instrumental yeah. break, he's like, "Oh, this is when this is when Stephen goes into lion," and I'm like, That's "You're right." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he That's just knows. Cool. Yeah, I love it. Love but it. My, my one of my favorite songs. I love all the songs, but one of my favorite songs is is your song. With, with Zach. Zach. Oh, that's what makes me cry. Shout out to Zach. Oh, Look at this. Miss, 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 miss my Zach. Oh, no matter what. Yeah, no matter what. That was so fun to record because um, I just got to be in the booth with Zach and like try to do whatever he did. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, before I believe we can ask the audience a couple more questions, um, I just wanted to quickly ask if you found someone who has never seen Steven Universe before and they're like, what one episode should I check out? What episode would you recommend? Oh, that's hard. I think watch the movie. Yeah, I would yeah. say that too. Yeah. Uh, maybe Mr. Greg would be a fun oh, one. Yeah. That's a good one. There's just so much that I don't think one episode, one 11 minute episode yeah. does it justice. Or even if you watch the uh, 42 minute one, the finale, or like, you know, the finale of, episode, of the last season, I would say the movie, just go straight for that 62, yeah. 64 minutes. Yeah. Why not? And it's then you like back Cliff's back. Notes version of everything, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so watch the movie. Watch, yeah. the movie. <laughs> watch the movie first and then go back and watch the entire series. Okay. Yeah. Or the just the Uncle Grandpa crossover. <laughs> <laughs> just just yeah. watch that one. It's a great standalone. Oh. Totally canon. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, we have we can have a couple people ask questions. Um, By the way, the cosplay I is love it. you guys are coming strong. Thank Thanks, you. David. Yes. Do they have microphones? I, I think they're going to give a mic. We need to like do a, yeah. a group oh. selfie. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, the music over this show has changed so much since the first season. How has that played into your character's arc, or how has it just kind of affected you outside of the booth? That is a Rebecca question. Rebecca no? question, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it plays a lot. I, I, I've heard Rebecca say in certain interviews that um, when, when, when something can't be said, that's when it's put into song and dance. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are these really 
great kind of indescribable feelings or you know things happening be between two people or maybe within oneself um, and, and she's trying to do that through the music I think once I heard that quote from her I realized like every I tried to kind of dig awesome. deeper um, and the lyrics and levels of every song and just see what the what what it was that they were trying so hard to say especially like with your song and Mr. Grant and also it's like, over. Yeah. also like di the different characters are marked by different specific instruments right mm. they all have like a I, I know like it's called, like, like a, has a particular piano motif? sound and drums pearls of violin Pearl, yeah. yeah so those are very they inform a lot of the emotion with with uh, very very specific instruments and percussion that mark the emotion of these characters so it's kind of all just written yeah. for us and we just have to show up right because yeah. the, the writing is so brilliant from the music like you were saying Michaela to you know to the animation everything is just kind of laid out for us but I love how the instruments sort of mark our emotional journey what's Peridot's instrument <laughs> there was like a whole chart, I remember, yeah, it's right? Yours yeah, is like a kazoo and mine's an earring. I think I have it. Love it. I think I have it. Hold on. Google exists. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google that. Okay. Uh, Stereon. Thank Carry you. On. Great question. It was a great question. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Uh, you in the front, yes. Hi. First of all, I love you guys so much. Um, I, I'm a teacher and I talk to my kids about you guys all the time and they're just super excited too. So hopefully I can get some signatures for my um, students. But um, I was wondering, uh, what was your favorite episode to record and why? I know these are hard because I, I have so many favorites, but, but Mr. Greg is one of my favorites because I just loved the, the entire show was pretty much the entire show was musical so I love that about it uh, I, I think for me it might be open book when Connie is talking about her favorite book series and also when we go into Rose's room and I get to be uh, two different versions of myself one uh, evil or not evil but gets a little out of hand <laughs> I, I loved um, alone at sea that was a good one for, for Lapis, because you really see how she finally stood up to uh, Jasper and uh, for them to have tackled that kind of um, you know subject matter uh, was, I thought, was so brave. And I, I get a lot of people, uh, you know, connecting with that storyline and how they handled, um, you know, that kind of toxic relationship and, and standing up to somebody that, uh, you know, was so toxic, so I, I just thought that was amazing um, art for, for Lapis, and that was a really fun one to record, too. Uh, my favorite was Kindergarten Kid, because uh, growing up I loved Looney Tunes and Beavis and Butthead and Rugrats and all these, um, you know, old school cartoons, so a recording Kindergarten Kid for me was uh, a, an opportunity to bring in my physicality, because it wasn't a lot of dialogue, it was more, um, sound effects like uh, uh, a lot of like ah, like screams uh, so that was a dream come true for me so that that's an episode that is really special to me because um, film is forever and it's a episode where I'm like look how many grunts I did in 11 minutes and uh, yeah it's just like an you know it's a throwback and a, and a nod to old school cartoons that I, I love so much that's so funny cuz my favorite was back to the kindergarten just so because I <laughs> I just love when I'm in the booth with Shelby, and she just has to be like, <laughs> It just was a funny, I don't know. When I'm out of the bathtub, right? Yeah, you're, you're like, like, let's go. And I'm like, mm. You're just like playing country music tunes. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> I also love when we're all in the room together, because then we can mm -hmm. kind of feed off of each other's energy and um, make effort sounds together in a row. <laughs> yeah. And we have to stay quiet when other people right. are doing <laughs> their, their, you know, their tracks, and we're like, yeah. and not yeah. we have yeah. to try really hard to not ruin each other's takes when we have a funny read. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> well, I wish we had more time. I honestly do, but we are at the end of the panel, and I wanted to thank all of you for coming up and talking to us about the show. It's amazing, and we can't wait for what's next. Yeah. So
want to say thank you. you yeah, guys thanks for fun. coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, London, for having us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, London. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Enjoy the movie if you haven't watched it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you.